All right, Unit 2, Geometry. Let's start by looking at the basics, the symbols, and vocabulary that we hope you've seen before. So a couple things in geometry. You could have a point, a line, a line segment, or a ray. There's a couple fancy symbols here. So if it is a line that extends on in both directions forever, you'll have the arrows at the end. On top of this X, Y right here, you can barely see it, but there should be two little tiny arrows that show you that this is a line. A line segment has actual end points. And then this line segment notation has a bar across the top that indicates that it would stop on each side. A ray starts with one end point, but then extends on forever in one direction. So again, really tiny right here on top of the Q, which is where it extends on forever past Q. There is a little arrow in that notation. What about different types of angles? Um, we are going to watch another video that has to do with how to name angles. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to review some of the basics here. How many degrees is in a right angle? Yep, 90 degrees is in that right angle. Hopefully you know that from our first unit. We also have acute angles and obtuse angles. So a cute little angle is going to be smaller than or less than 90 degrees. And then obtuse is going to be greater than 90 degrees. What about a straight angle? How many degrees makes up a straight line? All right, 180 degrees makes up a straight angle or a straight line. That's going to be a really important fact for us to know within this unit. What about different types of triangles? We hope that you've heard of these before. We've got the ones that are named by their side lengths. So equilateral triangles have all three sides the same. Isosceles have two sides the same. And scalene has no sides the same, which means every side is a different length. We can also name triangles based on their angles. And so an acute triangle has all three angles that are less than 90 degrees, just like acute angles are less than 90 degrees. We have a right triangle where one of the angles inside of that triangle will be a 90 degree angle. And then finally an obtuse triangle where one of the angles inside of that triangle will be greater than 90 degrees. Notice the markings on the triangles. These markings are going to be really, really super important. And so when you put those marks on that equilateral triangle and they all three have two little hash marks, that means that those sides have been marked congruent, okay, or also that they have the same length. Just like on the isosceles triangle, these two sides are the same length. The third side must be a different length if it's not marked. Next, we're going to work on naming some congruent parts of these triangles. So there's a lot of markings going on on these triangles. Um, this first triangle we could call triangle ABC. And the second triangle, if we wanted to name it the same, we could call it DEF. And you'll notice I went in order from one marking in the angle to two markings in the angle to three markings in the angle. And so if we look at the side lengths, the first side length that is marked with one marking is AC. And then in the other triangle, the corresponding side length that is marked with only one marking and therefore would be the same length is DF. You can see our fun notation for that. Remember that this bar across the top means that those side lengths actually have endpoints, of course, the vertex or vertices of a triangle. And this symbol in between here is your congruent symbol that we are going to be using a ton throughout this unit. What is another pair of congruent side lengths? Good. Make sure you match up those letters. And so AB has two markings, and in the other triangle, DE has two markings. You could also flip-flop these letters around, and it would mean the same thing. So the side BA would be congruent to the side ED, and that would be acceptable as well. What about the third pair of congruent side lengths that is congruent? All right, awesome. So CB across the bottom 
of that first triangle and FE across the bottom of that second triangle are congruent side lengths and it has been marked that way because they both have three hash marks. What about pairs of angles that are congruent? In this triangle, when I started naming it, I called the first triangle ABC and the second triangle DEF, and that was because angle A and D both only had one marking. So that makes angle A congruent to angle D. This is the symbol that will represent an angle, and again, our famous congruent symbol that's going to show up a ton within this unit. What is another pair of congruent angles? Based on the two markings, angle B is congruent to angle E. What about that last pair of congruent angles? Good. Based on the markings, angle C is congruent to angle F. What about some other symbols that we're going to be using and looking at? Uh, we've already talked about some parallel lines. I don't know if we've officially written it with a symbol yet, but this symbol in between here with the two double lines, that's a parallel symbol. So this is saying that line, see the little tiny arrows at the end there? That's line AB is parallel to line PQ. And then perpendicular lines, there's our symbol for perpendicular. It is kind of like an upside down T, but again, it's going to help you see that 90 degree angle uh, intersection point with two lines crossing at right angles. All right, last thing to consider. What is the difference between something being equal and something being congruent? If you check out these two triangles, um, I have labeled them both PIG, P-I-G, um, and so they are actually giving you the same information, which is that angle P and angle I are both 65 degrees, or in the other triangle, they're just marked as being the same measurement with a one singular angle marking. And then also, 5 centimeters is the same as 5 centimeters, and so this one singular marking here must mean that those line segments are the same. So what's the difference? When you're looking at the first triangle, you would say that PG is equal to GI, which are the two 5 centimeter markings, because the actual measure of those lengths are equal. So I know the measurement, which is 5 centimeters. It's like saying 5 equals 5. That makes sense. When I look at the second triangle, I put my fancy little line segment symbol on the top because I don't actually know how long these segments are, and these segments are more like objects. And so line segments, which are objects, would be considered congruent to each other, since I don't technically know the measurements. What about the angles? The angles are going to work similarly. The M in front of the angle symbol represents the measure of angle P is equal to the measure of angle I. And again, I actually know what that measurement is, which is that 65 degrees is equal to 65 degrees. In the other triangle, since I haven't been provided with a measurement and I only have these markings in the corners of angle P and angle I, I would instead say that the object's angle P and the object angle I are congruent to each other. This might be a little bit confusing, and we're not going to be super picky about it, but just in case you see something labeled differently within your workbook, you'll understand that anything that has to do with a measurement is equal to each other, but anything just comparing objects are going to be congruent.